Welcome back everyone, Randy here. Today we're gonna to go over third part of road four. This is the second to the last piece before we finish up next time. Today, we're gonna to start off with a kick combo. Two kicks in a row. However, before we get any further, in Mantis Boxing, we have a rule that we don't throw consecutive kicks. So why am I gonna show you two kicks in a row today? For us, kick combo is kick and base, kick and base, kick and base. We're always putting a foot back down on the ground after we throw a kick. And you see in some styles of martial arts and performance, mostly performance martial arts, that people will throw multiple kicks in the air, bam, 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 and they show off how good their balance is and it's crisp, it's clean, if somebody's doing it right, looks great. It's not practical. And this is also shown in point sparring matches where people can kind of bounce in on one leg and keep throwing kicks because it's basically a game of tag. And once they tag you, there's a ref coming in and saying stop and you reset. But in real life, in a real fight, that's horrible to stand around on one leg. And if we do, we better be a really good ground fighter. So start your BJJ lessons if you want to throw multiple kicks in a row. Because that's where we're going to end up, is on the ground. Just do the math. One leg or two legs. We're bipeds, we need two legs, and that gives us the ability to sprawl, to advance, to retreat, to circle, to generate power for a punch, or to kick again. From our kick combo, once we get past that, it's going to be cross kick and side kick. That's, those are the kicks that we're going to do. Both attack the knee, but the cross kick is rear leg only. We don't want to throw that from the front leg because it puts our hip in a weird position. So that's why we're going to use the side kick on the front leg and our side kick in Mantis attacks the knees. It doesn't attack the torso or the midsection, generally speaking. We reserve our heel kick for that because you can generate so much more power with it and keep your position safe. So anyway, back to the knee attacks followed by a circle punch and then we're going to do a little connect cling to the clinching hook, and clinching hook right to the crushing knee. From the crushing knee, we're gonna do a little pluck to the headlock, and then from the headlock to the rising choke. That's where we're gonna leave off today, and we'll finish up next time. So let's get started. All right, let's get into that cross kick, side kick combo that we talked about. Cover that first. So we want to start where we left off in the three section step with the crushing fist. So we'll end with the crushing fist. From there we shift the weight forward and we throw the cross kick. The foot's angled out. You'll we'll see in a second I'm aiming towards the camera. Step down with the foot open. Don't reset the foot straight. We want that 45 so that we can shift our weight forward again and fire the side kick. The side kick landing is going to be toes pointing straight towards our target. So it looks like this. Cross kick, side kick, land. You can see the foot's aiming towards it. So again, we start here, the crushing fist, cross kick, shift forward, don't pop up, keep the legs bent for base, and then side kick. Kick and base, kick and base. Let's get into the circle punch with the connect cling to the clinching hook. Now with this piece, if you're not comfortable with some of the intricacies of this move, you haven't done it before, I recommend that you start with just going from the circle punch to the clinching hook and leave it simple. For those of you that 
have a little more experience and you're comfortable with it, then you wanna go circle punch and then you're gonna curl and circle to get to the clinching hook. And then we'll do the pluck from there and the knee, all that fun stuff. Now from the side kick, we were here. We're gonna to do that closing step of the back foot where you bring it in tight, throw the circle punch. Now we're gonna throw a little circle hook with the front hand as we clear the arm and go to the clinching hook. Circle, clinch. Now let's add a couple little intricacies. We're gonna do a pluck. When we do a pluck, it's a short, sharp pull down. So if we have the neck, we're gonna pluck by pulling the elbow tight to the ribs. Not a big motion. Sharp, and then we come up to the crushing knee. Remember, rear leg. All right, before we go any further, let's put all of those together. We started here in the crushing fist. Cross kick, side kick, circle punch, clinch, pluck to crushing knee. Now what we want to do is carry that pluck further into a full stuff right to the headlock, also known as a guillotine. So we were here in the clinch, knee, stuff, and the arm comes out like this. Leave room for someone's head to go in there. Super simple, we're just gonna stand up. Bring the feet together, stand up. This is rising up or rising choke, 
We want to cinch this up. Key detail with this, we were here like this. As we rise, we want the chest to expand. Close up that space right there by the ribs. So we were here like this, rise up. Now, let's put that together from the clinch. We were here, crushing knee, stuff, rising choke. Clinching hook, crushing knee, stuff to the guillotine, rising choke. Let's walk it from the top and put all the pieces together. There you go. One more section to go. Next time, I'll see you then. And then after that, it's all about putting it together into one giant symphony. Till next time.